Hi everyone, today I have a special series of lectures that's based on biology and physics and maths and chemistry and I chose those because they're interconnected like biology is related to chemistry and chemistry is related to physics and it's related to maths so I'm gonna put lectures about those later in the week and just to get started I have a quote called biology gives you a brain and life turns into a mind by Jeffrey Eugenides and then I like that quote because like I'm saying that quote because of my brain. My brain is telling my mouth to say that. And then how does my brain work? It works by um, my brain and a mind. And then how do you get that from biology and life? How, how do you put that in a quote? It, it just goes again and, and again. And that's why I like that quote. But um, I have a special story. And that story is a very um, interesting story to me because it's how I was um, created. Like take a look at my skin or take a look at your skin i think that'll be easier it's made of trillions of tiny cells and then how did those trillions of tiny cells come it came from a process of evolution like here's the story so when the first cells were here then the first cells got energy from simple chemical reactions and then how they stored that energy was they used atp and ATP was the bank for energy. Like normally when we put money for a bank, we put energy in ATP. So the ATP was very useful because it was easy to break down because you only needed a tiny amount of energy. I'm just gonna draw that as a tiny E to show that it's tiny. You, you might not be able to see it though. With a tiny amount of energy can turn into a huge amount of energy and some byproducts like adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate but um some of you might be wondering what atp stands for and um atp the a part stands for adenosine and adenosine simply relates to one of the um bases in the dna and then the tri the t is tri and tri is free and the p part is phosphate so Wait, triphosphate, it works together together and you get triphosphate with, and with a tiny amount of energy you get ADP. So the difference between ATP and ADP is that instead of a T, there's a D and then that's because the inorganic phosphorus becomes that missing P but it's inorganic because due to its structure. And that's what powered it for millions and millions of years until there was one cell, and I'm gonna call him generation number two. And that generation number two wasn't something big, but rather um, some tiny junk. And that used photosynthesis. It developed an organ called a chloroplast. And that harnessed energy without using simple chemical reactions. So it had more energy and lots of energy limits to it. And there were some cells and those cells liked to eat those cells because they didn't have the things. So it completely relied on eating up the generation two cells. And it was like that for millions and millions of years until a cell tried to eat one up. Okay, so once there was a cell, and then the cell tried to eat one up. It tried to eat one cell up. And that cell was a cell that used photosynthesis, but it was different than using photosynthesis. It came in, but that cell, the one that tried to eat it, did not kill it. Instead, they became two organisms. And can I tell you that those two organisms, their fusion actually helped make you, make me, make a cat on the street, make my fish over there, who is swimming around, and it made everything. It was the ancestor to everything. So that was an evolutionary leap in it. And they came together because he, the, the this host cell, the host cell protected the tiny cell, and in exchange, the tiny cell wanted to give energy 
And that tiny cell was no longer called the tiny cell, it was now called the mitochondria. And the mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell. It gives lots of power. And here's the next slide. Okay. And mitochondria creates power for the cell. And this is a modern cell that you can find in skin, you can find everywhere. So you can see here there's pretty much a lot of things going on. And I have this book here, and it's pretty much the same picture, but although this is in a book and that's in, on the TV screen, but I'll explain it. Because there's lots of things, I'll explain them one by one. So here's the mitochondrion. When the mitochondrion produces energy for it, there's the nucleus. And the nucleus is, um, I think that everyone almost knows it, because the nucleus stores DNA. And DNA is very important because it stores the data for it. And then there's these ribosomes, and ribosomes will make proteins from it. So what happens is that the ribosomes will use proteins um, and they will find DNA and they'll make proteins. There's a plasma membrane and the plasma membrane is about, it helps the cell keep its shape. There's the lysosome, it's full of enzymes, so it will help digest it from the vessels through phagocytosis or something else. And, oh, um, so I have this text here and it's about cells. And the cells have these organs and they act like organs, like the, um, the cytoplasm and the ones that I said before. And then there's the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough one, and it helps, um, yeah, it helps do in metabolic processes. There's the microfilament, and that helps motor proteins um, do its job by getting these vesicles around the cell. And there's the vacuole, which is the trash can of the cell, and the cytoplasm, which is the liquid around it. Um, there's the um, filaments, and then the filaments are pretty much what the centrosome makes. The centrosome makes the skeleton of it. And these intermediate filaments, the microfilaments, the microtubules, they make the cytoskeleton. And the cytoskeleton helps and supports the cell keep to keep its shape. And the centrosome, um, it looks like that because in the cross section, it's actually two of them looking like that. And here, um, and that, that's basically all of it. And there's, oh, there's also chromatin. And chromatin, it helps it when it's splitting apart. Because when it's splitting apart, then the chromatin will pull the DNA so that it can split into two separate cells. And just to mention, it also splits apart the nucleus but the outer membrane of the nucleus will actually help with it. And these are quite complicated, and I'm gonna just say that um, they have a lot of tasks that they can do, and this is only in the modern eukaryotic cell. And the eukaryotic cell is what's in us, but there's a plant cell, and the plant cell has different things, like chloroplasts, they're an extra, in, and they have the Golgi apparatus, and that's what can send packages of food around the things, and there's the centrosome, which is also in, oh, yeah, it's in there also, the cell wall is different from this. That's called a plasma membrane. And then the cell wall is in a plant cell. The cell wall actually looks like a square. And how they duplicate is they get cell walls and then they completely make it into a cell wall. And, oh, I've came so far on this. So that's pretty much it for cells. And I'll go into the deeper process about cells in this week's other lecture of biology. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll go into detail in the next video. Bye.